everybody. Welcome to Contra Talk. My name is Richard Henry, and my guest today is Joe Garibay, or as some call her, Grandma Joe, or Gma Joe from Keeping It Real. Uh, welcome to the show, Grandma Thank Joe. You How so are you much. doing? Doing great. So appreciate you having me. I'm um, coming up on retirement and off Fridays, so I love the opportunity on these Fridays to sort of connect with yeah. my, my amazing uh, media family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, so you are obviously a mother and a grandmother. Uh, you are a wife and you're a YouTuber, fellow YouTuber, of course, a follower of Christ out there in Oregon, the uh, frontier, Western Oregon. Um, why don't you, we'll get into some things today, but why don't we just first talk just about uh, your YouTube channel. It's uh, Keeping It Real with Grandma Joe. if you don't know it. Uh, so listeners, go ahead and check it out. She's got great content, very concise, much more concise than me. I'm always a little uh, <laughs> jealous. I don't know if that's the best word, but I like it. It's very concise and, and, and to the point but impactful. I know some ladies from uh, the church I pastor actually check out your content fairly regularly as well. Oh, so yeah. there's definitely different demographics and different points of view, which is wonderful. You don't see, um, usually you see, you know, twenties and thirties and sometimes forties people mm -hmm. starting YouTube channels, but you started uh, later and that's great. So mm -hmm. why don't you talk a little bit about that? What brought you to starting the channel and wanting to use this uh, platform? Great question. Thank you so much. So with the COVID shutdown, and like you said, I am in the season, you know, in my 60s, I'm going to be 64 in a week, week and a couple of days. Um, I was watching, uh, well, back then it was Mike Winger and Alicia Childers and through uh, Alan Parr, I got connected to Ruslan KD and he kind of was the one that God used to inspire me to change my lifestyle, my eating plan and to get off my death. And what am I doing with my time, talents, and gifts the side of eternity. And then that with, along with Think Media, we've just hit record. I prayed about it, uh, talked to some people. I've got a mentor um, and I just hit record. And my first one's horrible. My first, first three do not have a mic, can hardly hear me. And then the end music plays and they about jump out of their seat. Uh, so it's 1% better as you know, the, they talk about on the presentation side. And then I'm old school. So I have a, a, a group, of my, I call them grandma's board. I have my son who's an associate pastor. I have a mentor, male mentor, and I have two very, very seasoned Christian couples and they watch all of the content and they hold me accountable for the content and for my context in terms of, you know, I don't kind of fly off the seat of my pants or get too much into Grandma Joe's own opinion. So what I love about it is um, it was Grandma Joe keeping it real in faith and in truth and it's faith based answers to current topics or suggested topics. I connected with Facebook. Uh, someone I worked with a long time ago, we had lunch and she had lost her husband. And after lunch, she said, you know, mom, you really need to do something on grief. And so, you know, then the grief one came out there three to five minutes. And so you can, you know, be in the shower, doing dishes, driving to work, whatever, quick in and out and to the point. Um, but, but solid teaching, a lot of scripture verses, um, but hopefully in a in a palatable way with, you know, some pictures and transitions and stuff. So I try to keep it real. I I love, um, I'm going to go live here uh, next week. It'll be my first one. It'll be a year anniversary for God providing the channel for me. And so I'm going to do my first live with Violet, Brian Babes on women in ministry. And what is this, what do the scriptures say about that? Because we both are in alignment that uh, women should not be pastors or elders. Um, but we do have a place in ministry. And so we'll be talking about that. So I'm pretty excited. And then I'm going to be doing lives and interviews like this at least once, maybe twice a month thereafter for a while. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. How it impacts with culture is, um, you know, for example, the Will Smith slap. Um, so, you know, I did uh, one about that, but it was all, also about triggers and angers and how most of the time the triggers are more about me. So people would get led because of the cultural topic, but the scriptural and the points in my my heart is that there's seasoned scriptural doctrinal truth that will be forever green long after the news fades. So that's kind of the heart and the goal of those short three to five. So I had Disney, I had um, just all the current topics that are buzzing. Ramsey, when he did this, you know, Holy Spirit dripping with 400 bucks was like, are you kidding me? You know, so <laughs> all these current topics kind of hit those. Um, Gossip. I did one on gossip. Will gossip yep. send you to hell? Yep. Uh, because there's so much, you know, counter talk and in, in this media platform and and slamming and trash talk and stuff. So um, that's kind of what 
prompted that one. And then, of course, my most recent one that I know we're going to hit on is um, when Roe versus Wade came out, there was a little bit of a personal testimony on abortion in terms of how it affected my life. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and so you you were just you just felt led. I'm always curious why people start start their channel in particular. Obviously, we're on YouTube predominantly, although this is on on audio platforms as well. But so it was just kind of you're watching these people and these people and you kind of thought, well, why not me? Was that basically kind of what prompted you or or and you're saying I need to I need to be in this space and proclaim proclaim truth? No, it started with what they're saying was like, are you, are you sure? What? Oh, what? Okay. Okay. And so yeah. then while I'm vetting what they're saying, you know, as we're vetting that to the word of God, I had a different take. Yeah. Um, you know, even, you know, I just don't want to get into, I, I, I'm political, but I'm not. So I have strong politics, but, but my desire isn't to poke the bear and, you know, throw a flame out just to start an argument. You yeah. know, if it comes up, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to be firm about it, but I'm not going after it just to be divisive. I don't, that's not my heart. I don't believe in that. So these things were happening even about, you know, way back when with, you know, the Floyd situation. And that's kind of around the time that I started. And my thought is, where are the prayers for the, the woman with the gun to her head? Where's the prayers with him and his family? Where are the prayers with the people he affected? Why are we as Christians not acting like Christians? Why are we taking this intense side? I'm not saying you can't speak truth. I'm never saying that we should not vocally speak the truth of God and his word, but our actions should not look more like the world and yeah. less like Christ. Yeah. And where's our humility and where's our forgiveness and where was, but by the grace of God go I, and where was it, you know, both sides, how, what does it feel like to be a police in that whole environment? And what does it feel like to be a black man in that whole environment? And what does it yeah. feel like to be a mother who's raising a black child and what they have to say to them? I never experienced that. And so but I experienced, you know, being a woman and, you know, prejudiced and things like that. So I have an understanding. We all have a perspective and an understanding. But again, why are we not talking about maybe both sides of the situation? And why are we not aligning that with scripture? Yeah. And so that's the piece, even with Ruslan, because, you know, he's so young to me. And I keep thinking, I'd love to see him in 20 years. I, I really <laughs> want to see what God does with him yeah. in 20 years where he's kind of settled down and, and his his opinion has changed 20 years ago from his beginning ones. I know it's going to change 20 years from now, just like all of ours. Yeah. And so, but he would say things, He you know, he leans a little bit lefter than I do. And so he would say things and I would go, oh, <laughs> you know, so I thought, I have something to say about that. Yeah. Spiritually speaking, I have a, an experience. I have, I have a thought process. And my, my girl, when the keeping it real part comes from our family dynamics, is, you know, the whole mafia, you know, you always have those ones in the family where, you know, if I was struggling with my boss and I told this particular person in our family, you know, it's like, you want me to go slash, slash their tires? It's like, no, I don't tell that person because I tell my best friend who holds me accountable and says, well, you can only, you can only be accountable for your part and what you, how you respond to it. So what's God yeah. telling you to do? And that's the person I'm going to go to, right? Yeah. For sure. And so <laughs> even, so the keeping it real is the, the girls or my family, do not come to me when they want a bandwagon. So if they want to come in, trash talk their husbands and whatever is going on, they don't come to me. That's what their sisters are for. And that's what their friends are for. But if they want truth, even my grandchildren, you know, they, you know, grandma, what do you think about that? You know, mom, what do you think about X, Y, Z? Um, they come to me because I'm going to give them some solid truth. It doesn't mean I don't align with them and I don't say, yeah, you know, people can be a jerk. He's being a jerk. I understand that. I can mourn. I can understand. I can empathize. We can walk that. But I'm more about, okay, is this a one minute pity party or a one week? Because then we're going to get our big girl pants on and we're going to talk about what is God calling us to do in the midst of this. That's good. That's good. Um, let's look at your channel real quick, just for everybody, at least the viewers, so we can see. Um, pop it up here. There we go. So. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> There's you. So if you don't know Grandma Joe, Gma Joe, as some as some say, I like it. Uh, keeping it real in faith and truth. Check her out. Subscribe to her channel. Got a bunch of content here, uh, and like you said, just trying to be concise, trying to be biblical, and really trying to make sure that 
we're acting like Christians. And that, that's, I think, a lot of people's focus uh, or at least desire. And it certainly is mine because, you know, so often we forget that and we think, ah, well, we kind of get caught up with the present age. Mm -hmm. So, no, that's good. Well, in my uh, foundation verses, um, John 17, 17, sanctify them by truth and your word is truth. Yeah. So it's keeping it real in faith and truth. And that truth is the word of God. And there is a truth. Everything is not relative and subjective. And so yeah. that's kind of the place that I come from. Yeah. Yeah. So check her out. If you have not, you can just search Jima Joe, keeping it real there on YouTube and, uh, and find some great content there. Uh, you mentioned... And I remember you said this on one of the videos I was watching uh, Mother's Day. It was right around Mother's Day. You had mentioned how you were affected by uh, the idea of abortion, if you will, uh, ending a pregnancy, killing a baby, whatever you want to call it. Right. There's different terms, really. But it wasn't you, but it was actually you in the womb. Why don't you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that, how your mother was there mm -hmm. and chose life? Because this is the one thing that we can really flesh out is so often the pro-abortion uh People, they they want, well, I, I believe in a woman's right to choose. And we saw this in full swing, I remember a number of years ago with, it was Tim Tebow's mom, uh, you know, famous quarterback. And he was, she was told to abort him. And mm -hmm. people were getting on her case about choosing life, which is odd because many people, they want to pretend that they're neutral. They're not, they're really not, uh, at mm -hmm. least not in my estimation, but they pretend they are and say, well, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, I don't think it's uh, women's right to choose. Okay, well, these women who choose life, you're like, oh, how dare you? And it's like, it's like as if automatically that means, uh, well, I mean, it does mean something and they know it. But that woman's action to choose not to kill her baby is now seen as an affront to the person who still wants to believe in a woman's right to choose, quote unquote, which is odd because that woman chose life. <laughs> so why don't you talk a little bit about your mom and that that situation is pre Roe v. Wade. Uh, as well. So just flesh that out a little bit for us. Well, to do that, let's kind of start with when I was about 10 or 11, I found out that um, basically my mother had a one night stand and that the name, my last name at that time, which was Wilson, was made up. Um, so on the birth certificate, she just picked the last name. Uh, it was some bartender um, that she knew. And um, I during the time that I had a hunger to sort of ask questions and stuff, I found out much later it had been burned down, you know, records are gone, that kind of thing. But I remember being very upset and then refusing to use my last name. So my mother's last name was Rainer, again, because she was never married and she picked my last name. So I refused to write that on any of my schoolwork. I always wrote um, Rainer down. And um, at that back then, my name was Shelly. That was um, Michelle's my middle name. And so I was called Shelly. So I'd be, you know, Shelly Rayner, whatever. And I just, it was at least a year of just really kind of rebelling against that. I, and it's so funny how people, they just want to blame everything on their parents, even in that. And even running away from home. I was like, 15, well, I think I was 14 when I ran away from home. It never really was about my mom. It was about feeling like I didn't fit in or people didn't understand me. But my mother raised me as a single woman. She was a very strong woman. She worked at Rockwell International for many years and was there long after men came and went above her in positions of authority. And so, and she was very matter of fact, um, kind of a person. And so I have a, a, a real strength with her, from her. And I think some of my best qualities are, are hers. So here she is 60 years ago. It was completely different um, than it is now. And when I became a Christian, I finally had a piece about not pursuing my father, like that God shut that door. Who knows what kind of person or character he was? Who knows what was going on in his life? Maybe that would have destroyed whatever God had, you know, put in his life. Because I'm sure positive he did not know anything about me. So it's not like he knew. Um, and so, you know, God just gave me a piece about that. So now I'm into my adult world. I'm a Christian. I have a peace. God gives me a peace about that. I do remember saying this. It was so funny. Well, I don't know. We would get in trouble, but it's kind of like um, my mother kind of played it off a little bit in terms of, you know, maybe we didn't do the whole thing kind of thing. And I remember thinking, uh, come on, you're giving me all the truth. Why don't you just give me all the truth? Well, then begin again, my, uh, my, 
son was born from that the, that particular way of it happening. <laughs> and so um, I think God gave a piece to me about the fact that, you know, there there is lots to be said about, you know, just being careful and not, you know, we all want to get so close to that line. And instead of just saying, you know, this whole thing is not okay. Why don't we just not be in this situation? Don't be in the backseat of a drive-in movie with your boyfriend and think that you're going to have some amazing self-control. It's just not right. going to happen. So just Play don't cards. be there. Yeah. So just don't be there. Yeah. So anyways, um, fast forward, I'm an adult. I have a piece about this. And um, then I find out much later in my adult life that my mother, um, it was really late. My mother was um, very sick and she passed away you know, about 20 years ago ish. And so um, that's when I found out that my mother was on the abortion table with me. Wow. And I guess um, many of my mother's friends and, you know, a lot of people knew about it. I, I never did. Wow. And um, I do remember though, asking my mother, cause when I did find out about it, we did talk about it. And I said, mom, if it was as clinically done then as it is now, cause back then it was, you know, more of a hack job. Do you think you would have gone through with it? Cause so I did have this desire to know, yeah. you know, what's what, why did you back out? Why did you, what encouraged you to get off that table? And, um, and my grandmother was with her and, um, she said, no, it was a moral decision, mm. honey. I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Wow. And I remember when I was talking to, I think it was on Daryl's channel that my mother's faith, when I would ask her about, you know, do you know the Lord, you know, is he your savior? She would say yes. I know all that kind of stuff. And then I'd ask her, well, do you ask him, you know, what about this? What about that? You know, what do I do about this? She said, no. And I remember saying how can you not, if you're saved and a Christian, why are you not like on your knees asking God for yeah. everything? And she said, I believe him. He, I'm saved. He's going to come get me. He's in charge of my life. I trust him. Yeah. Huh. And I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> who, who has the deeper faith? My mother or, or me, who's at the altar every day, you know, asking for forgiveness yeah. and trying to re reset that, you know, works mentality that I had for, so many years that you just, you know, keep failing miserably. So anyways, that's my mother's personality. And I say that only to say that God meets us where we're at. Yeah. And my, my mother was a very practical, down to earth, straightforward, straight shooter type of person. And, you know, that was her belief. And she said, no, morally, I, I, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Wow. No, that's good. I appreciate that. I mean, and that really flushes out so much for, all of us and it's it's easy especially online and you know quick comment you you know and a lot of this is one-sided even for me you know and i'm not some huge person or anything but there's people that watch these interviews and uh other content i produce <clears throat> and i don't know much about them generally i mean i know you <clears throat> obviously support the channel as i support yours and stuff but a lot of times it's very one-sided and even in church even in your neighborhood even you know your co-workers you don't really know a lot about people and we often forget if you're like me that yeah everybody has a story it doesn't make one story better or more true or something but it what it does is it shows us our humanity and shows us that you know mm -hmm. i'm a sinner she's a sinner he's a sinner we're all broken wow that's really messed up well i thought i thought your life was like this but it was really like that you know mm -hmm. and it kind of dashes the whole you know privilege based on skin tone and, and economic whatever and you know, everybody has both advantage and disadvantage. I mean, you didn't have a dad. I mean, that's that's hard. That's really difficult. And and yet mm -hmm. here you are. Uh, and other people have two parents and rebel against that and, you know, wish their parents were dead. And so there's all sorts of gradations uh, of of where people come from. And so I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, would you mind sharing a little bit about how you came to Christ? Just in general, I always love testimonies and, and how people understood mm -hmm. uh, who Jesus was and who who they were. Sure. Yeah. That just the, the quick version is around the 15 age ish, you know, in that realm, um, the coffee houses back then, uh, all those amazing songs is, um, uh, wars and guns, you know, don't be left behind, you know, that yeah. whole series back then I was a young teenager. And again, I do have to tell you that a lack of a father was impacted my life in that I was always looking for the, 
the father figure and I was always mm-hmm. looking for love in the wrong places. Okay. And so those identities and that desire for a, a, a man and a solid man in my life, even in my youth. Um, and again, you know, when you're a youth, you, you, you pretty much choose to give up sex for relationship, um, you know, for just, the, you know, touch and hu- humanity and stuff. And so if you're not taught and you don't have that example, you know, I was looking for love in all the wrong places. So here I am a teenager and I'm hitting a local church and it's those Wednesday night coffee hours with the guitars and the music and all the emotional feed. It's truth. There's definitely truth in that. So I don't, I don't want to say that there's not, not God's word. Let me say this. God's word will not return void. And so whether it's in those coffee houses, you know, and they're just all teenagers and I'm, you know, a young girl, that's where the got cute guys were, you know, playing the guitar and stuff. And then the, the, the fear, you know, the left behind, like you hear the message, the message was yeah. truth to me. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be that one. I do believe in Christ. I did accept that wholeheartedly. So then you get baptized and then you're basically, and we did, we went around schools and did productions and testimonies and heartfelt, you know, testimonies at that. And so I was definitely connected, but I was never taught. I was never taught to read the word, to obey the word, to yeah. the sanctification process was and the mentorship was null and void back then. So then it's, you know, whatever I say, you know, generalization, you know, 15 years plus, you know, I'm in my 30s now and I'm just doing life myself, living my own life, making my own decisions, failing miserably. I mean, I have failed marriages with an S that tells you how you know, messed up. I, I was, um, yeah. my license plate was, you know, obstinate my first one. And that tells you my personality. And then my next yeah. one is forgiveness. That tells you what God did with, with me. And then my mother passed away and I have loved mom and I've had it ever since. And so you see that and you say, this is the sanctification process. And when I'm listening to the media and so much of the trash talk, I think, and so much of the, the judgment, I, I looked at my daughter when she was living with me and had a really hard time not expecting her to be where I was. So she's a bartender, which means she's got a drink every night, which means she's driving home, which, but she's speaking into people's lives. She's a Christian, but she was not walking the faith. And she, but she, there's changed people. The, the bartender, the person who owned the bartender is a changed person today because of her witness and her faith and, wow. and how she dealt with things at hard times and the way she spoke. And these are people you and I, would never meet. We wouldn't even be in the same company with. So we can't underestimate the power of God in, in our lives, even as baby Christians. So, you know, 30s, not walking the walk, go to a women's conference, you know, God and I meet, he says, or talk, and he says, I say, why is it different? He goes, because you're willing to obey. So, you know, at that point, I'm in the word, you know, and I'm not a Beth Moore fan and Joyce Myers, although I got a lot of impact back then because every women's conference was, you know, their book or their speaking or their something. Yeah, and sure. we were better wives because of it. We were better people. We we loved hearing these jokes and saying, that's me. Oh, my gosh, that's <laughs> me. I need to do better. Sure. Um, but they're off course. There's no question that they are not off course right now. Yeah. And, you know, there's so many of us that start well and don't end well. Well, I started poorly and Fortunately, I'm hopefully ending better. Doesn't yeah. mean I don't fail, but <clears throat> I don't have the same desires to go out dancing and drinking that I did in my 20s and 30s. And so that sanctification process happened with me. I, if I met the man that I that God brought into my life now, I would have destroyed him, Richard, because I'm a strong woman. Yeah. And a strong woman that's under God's authority steps back and allows God to minister to their, their husbands. We provide a safe home one of my 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 video that just posted this morning is it, it you know speaks about that you know forever wrong box you know are you the one that's nagging and complaining and are you are you providing a place where your husband can't wait to come home to or are you providing a place that they have to pray in the car before they walk in god give me the strength to come home you yeah. know so that's that's the process and so since i have been there done that i can speak into that i can love them right way there i can attempt to not judge my daughter when she's living with me for five years and she said mom you never compromised you always kept the door open but you also still spoke truth yeah so i even when she was richard and i'm going to be honest when she was living with um, her fiance at the time i said i'm not even supposed to have supper with you if you claim to be a christian 
Yeah. And, and so we, we prayed through that. We wrestled with that. And the, the conclusion came for me, what God gave for me is she was struggling. So her desire to do the right thing was met with her inability to do the right thing at that time. Yeah. And so although our hearts are wicked and who would know them for her, her, she really had a desire. And so I remember having those desires and not being successful. Even now I had to restart my eating plan because when COVID hit, I got off my eating plan and that ability to restart that first day or that first day of exercise, you know, that first day of getting out and walking two miles because not because I want to, you know, be all that in my body, but because I want to be healthy and I want to be around here another 15 years. Well, we raised this seven-year-old that God has given us. You know, I love my children and my grandchildren. They're a blessing. I want to be here to minister to their life and to speak truth into their life. And if I'm not taking care of the body and the gift that God gave me, I may not. And yeah. so even though he's ultimate, you know, we do have a responsibility. And so even when Jennifer was, you know, living with us and I still know what it's like to be, to fail, to fail miserably. And I pray, I ask us on this media, remember what you were like when you were 20 and doing stupid things. Remember when you were 40 and doing stupid things. Yeah. And not, let's not, I mean, let's speak truth, but let's not be so harsh that we're just putting everybody in this forever wrong box and judging them because they're failing again. Yeah. Even Edwin, who I love dearly, um, the Peruvian Life podca podcast, he was talking about he came out of deliverance ministries. Yeah. And so when you're talking to somebody who's in that, and yes, you need to speak truth and say you are scripturally off course. You need to reset your course because even a few degrees off course, you're not going to reach your destination. Yeah. So get back on course. That's different than than having such a hateful attitude. We can hate the what they're doing, what they're saying, and, and how how the enemy is using that to take our children and our body of believers off course. But here's one who came out of that and now look at his witness. Yeah. And so I celebrate God in that. I say, God will you go Hill song, whatever it is, you know, the songs. They're yeah. songs that are not, you know, scripturally accurate. But then there are also people loving Lord and raising their hands and just truly wanting to be the wanting to be under God's authority. And God's gonna meet them. God's gonna send that person and pull them out or a media like this. They're gonna listen to, you know, Richard, you, or they're gonna hear one of mine or thousand other people, Alicia on a progressive Christianity. And they're going to, now God's going to go, Hmm, they're, they're going to have that. I need to vet this. I need to check this out. Yeah. And then you're going to come out of that. They're going to, God, God's going to pull his, his, his children to himself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. I mean, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to really have that right balance with either an unbeliever but they know the right thing to do. And they're not doing it. Or maybe somebody who says they're a Christian, uh, but they're not really sure. And, you know, the flesh is weak and help my unbelief and that sort of thing. Uh, it's hard because, mm -hmm. you know, there, there is a very, I mean, our culture is, is overwhelmingly licentious, right? License, mm -hmm. right? Not Liberty, but license. I just get to punch my ticket, do whatever I want to do. I right. mean, you know, it's June, right? It's pride month. And I want to do whatever I want to do. Love, love is love, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really, ultimately, it's slavery, right? Because you're you're impassioned and you have zero choice and, mm -hmm. and you're in bondage to whatever that thing is. Mm -hmm. But many people who, like you mentioned, you know, family members and friends, especially early on uh, in, in our conversation here. But I've got that. I mean, I remember being 20 and there's a, a point of, you know, the right thing to do, but loving that person uh, and trying to definitely pray for that person being firm, but you know, you don't need to be jerks uh, either. And yeah, I remember there's a story that came to mind. Um, there's a new family at the church I pastor and uh, he's a military guy. And I, I didn't know him before. He's about, he's a couple years older than me. A uh, great family. And he was in Hawaii. That's where he met his wife a number of years ago. And she's from Nebraska. They, she was there for school. And anyway, so he, coming from kind of a more fundamentalist church here in Kentucky, different church, not the one here now, but uh, different church, but very fundamentalist, you know, this, 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 this all. And, and, and there's good reasons for that, right? There's good reasons to seek holiness and, and walk righteously with God and, and forsake sin. Like we're called to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. But then there's a point of, well, how far do you go? 
you know, quote unquote, and how when somebody stumbles, what happens? Because we're all sinners, right? Even if you're stumbling in your your mind and your heart, not necessarily in action. But he was in Hawaii and uh, it was a Pentecostal church. This is where they met. And, you know, again, how the Lord uses it. it wasn't a very good church by their own admission, but the word was kind of preached. And he, mm-hmm. he said that he came to knowledge of, uh, of his sin there, met his wife and everything else. But the pastor, he was smoking outside. The pastor came out. Not the pastor was smoking, but he was. And, and of course, this guy, my friend, he was like, oh, here we go. You know, he's going to get on my case about smoking. And, you know, there's good reason to, you know, shouldn't smoke, right? We, smoking smoking's bad. But he met this guy where he was at, and the pastor said, hey, where's the best place to put an ashtray for you? You know, and it's like, oh, wow. Right. Does does that mean automatically you need to be like, do you know, smoking causes cancer? Do you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know, smoking is, you know, your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. He didn't even know this, this guy, this military guy who's there going to his church. He just wants to be kind to him. And, and, and I guess my point is we don't have to overwhelm the person. You just plant that seed. You just talk about that thing. You mention something. You say, Hey, let me pray for you. Hey, let me do this. Hey, how can I blah, blah, blah. Hey, would you like to read scripture with me? Hey, that's really difficult. You know, I'll, I'll, you know, let's, let me know if you need anything for me. And like, and you're kind of building this, uh, and it depends on the person, I suppose, but you're building this rapport with that person, whether they're a relative or not, and, and not just overwhelming them with scripture. It doesn't mean we don't use scripture. It doesn't mean we don't adhere convictionally to the word, but you know, as the Lord meets us in salvation, where we're at, like you've said um, about your testimony, that's how I was too. Grew up in the church, but didn't really know and didn't really understand the gospel till I was in my early twenties, and even that was still pretty broken, right? Still pretty piecemeal. Uh, it was a level of I didn't get overwhelmed with all the terms and all this and this thing and that story and all this other stuff happening that you think, oh my goodness. So it's 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 good to I guess baby steps and plant seeds. Uh, with people so my philosophy and even when i was working with dhs when we we got little ryan is you you cannot put every single thing through the same lens you can't use one scripture and put everybody through it you can't put it's just god didn't intend it that way christ didn't set the example that way so when he told the rich man you know to sell everything he wasn't telling telling every rich person to do that and we just get this silly thing that we've got to put everything through one verse and usually the verse that I pick, you know, right. or my choosing. So the way I kind of de- define it for me, Richard, too, and I, I love everything that you're saying. It's just, it's, it's so true. And it's, are you going to put the banner on the church for that sin? So if you're putting the banner on the church of, um, of pornography, let's go to the church of pornography yeah. and bless the Lord. Let's go to the church of gossip and bless the Lord. Let's go to the church of gluttony. How many of our churches need to just, dis- you know, reset that whole thought process, you know, for somebody like me who's struggling with a food, food addiction and who is um, borderline diabetic or type uh, two diabetic. And I go to these potlucks and, you know, there's just tons of food. And then where does it all go? Does it go to the poor? No, it just, so is this the church of, you know, gluttony? Is this the church of, you know, you pick it, you know, the, the, all the LG, whatever terms, you know, the difference is, are we saying sin is sin? And so let's all, you know, deal with that and let's edify each other and call it out, be truthful. You know, sometimes we need a hug and sometimes we need a, you know, a kick in the butt, you know, just, yeah. we need truth, harsh, harsh truth, you know, no nonsense truth. I remember my son, don't you love this circle? My son comes, who's looked to me constantly since he was young, since he went into the military, for truth, scriptural truth. Now he's an associate pastor and I'm looking to him for truth. And yeah. he said to me, cause I was getting lazy with COVID, you know, we got out of going to church and you know, it's yeah. a half hour away, whatever. And it was so easy to do it with a cup of coffee and your pajamas on. And so, and you're watching it live, you know, the same, same thing. And so yeah. he said, mom, I don't care where you plug in, but get connected and plug in, you know, all in. And, you know, it was like, boom. And I needed that. Now, would I say that to everybody? You know, no, but he knew me and I'm a seasoned Christian and he got to tell me the what for. He's also my accountability partner for the channel. And so he was like, you know, mom, you know, are you? And also I remember telling my son this, I said, you can only say it one time, but you have the, you have permission son. Cause he loves going to church to tell me 
when I say we're not going to church to say, mom, you said we're going to church unless we're sick. You may say that to me one time, yeah. knowing that he will and he will because he he's he'll remember it. <laughs> Every time I get up, what do you think is going in my mind if I'm yeah. thinking about staying home? My son's going to ask me. Yeah. Are we going to church? Sure. Are you sick? Is somebody yeah. in the household sick? And so that accountability. So, yeah, just the, the the difference that you speak about is are we putting a huge banner on and saying this is the house of sin and let's glorify God and we're all okay in it? Or are we are we saying, oh, my gosh, I'm, I, I struggle so much in this. Every his mercies are new every day. Pray for me every morning. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this. And and it's not me. It's not me working harder. It's me being connected to the source, the vine. It's when the reason I was able to reset even this time with the food, because I was in the word of God and talking about the the fact that your body's a temple. And I'm speaking on a platform talking about um, giving God the glory and putting him first and living a life that honors him. Yeah. So here's a gift. You know, if I gave you a car, how would you take care of that car? You take care of it really well. Well, you know, but God gives us our body and we just trash it. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Nutrition. That's a big thing. Uh, I mean, I've never been like insanely fit or anything, but um, no, I know. Healthy. But just, yeah. You, I mean, that's something that we really neglect uh, as as Christians. And, you know, certain parts, especially the South and other other places where food is so good and so prevalent. I mean, we have just so much in our, in our culture in general uh, that it's it's easy to get sucked into gluttony. You know, gluttony and laziness uh, and hand in hand, but gossip and other stuff. Those are easy sins, you know. But sins of 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 uh, well, sex abuse. Okay, that's bad. Or or LGBT stuff. That's bad. You know. But other stuff. Ah, yeah. You know. Ah, nobody's perfect. That's kind of the attitude. <laughs> it's like, well, well, in God's I mean, yeah, talks- but we know that. He says the sins of, of sexual sins are different because it, we join together as yeah. one. I mean, it's yeah. so the consequences are different. The consequence of me um, killing a baby or shooting someone is different than when I steal the pencil from work because I, right. you know, forgot to, you know, the, the consequences are different. Sin is sin, but God constantly talks about there is a different consequence. Yeah, and no, so we're not saying to put all the consequences in the same box. We're not saying that we should take a murder more seriously than we do someone that's just took a pencil home from yeah. work who's stealing or who gossiped or said the wrong thing. Um, however, to minimize it, to excuse it, to use our liberty as a license for evil is also very scripturally wrong. Yeah. All right. So is there anything else you want to add um, as far as just kind of, I know you, like you mentioned with the, the unforgivable stuff and, and even the video you dropped uh, today. Uh, anything else you want to add to that? I just want to remind everybody that's going through any of these hard decisions that abortion is not the unforgivable sin. Yeah. And sometimes we treat people like it is. And we do have to watch out that, you know, but by the grace of God, go I. I mean, look yeah. at Ukraine. Look at the murder, that mass murder that's going on in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, in the murders, in the thousands and thousands of wars that got our freedom to where we're at right now. Uh, None of us uh, do not have blood on our hands, to be honest with you, um, even though it's not on my personal hands. Um, So and and then if we look at Christ's blood, Christ's blood is on every one of us. So uh, in terms of that, that process. So it is not the unforgivable sin and reach out and get help and get good mentors and counsel. Um, If you're thinking about it, go to the pregnancy care center. I was going to say that I was impacted when my daughter was working for the pregnancy care center, I went to one of their galas and they did have someone that was from Planned Parenthood and it was her testimony and what she saw. I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry, (laughs) but it impacted me forever. And it was really then, because I had a a, a more, um, more what I would say middle of the ground approach about abortion back then, you know, the three months kind of thing. And, um, and, and that stance, especially coming, you know, through it with my mom and everything. Um, and it was at that time that I, that God just really revealed to me that life is at conception yeah. and um, that he's in charge and divinely knitted us in the womb. And so I really have a strong position on that. But even in our family, we have some that have made amends and then we have others that have chosen not to yet. And God has not met them in that that area. 
Um, so we just need to be careful that, you know, we're speaking truth, we're loving people, and yet, you know, we're not throwing everybody in that forever wrong hate box because they've made decisions that have been poor. Yeah. No, that's a good, and that's a good point. I mean, and because while there is consequences, there are deeper consequences for certain sins at the same time, uh, we are all broken sinners. And as you said, Christ's blood uh, can and does cover us, wash us clean. Uh, but there is that level of, well, you have to turn to him, right? I mean, many, most people don't want uh, to submit. They don't want to mm -hmm. repent. They say, I'm going to do it on my own. Uh, so that's the big difference with, you know, the, the, the believer and the unbeliever, as it were. Uh, you are in Oregon. And I know we have a slight, you know, kindred spirit there with me also being from California. Uh, funny that you're in the same town. I've got my parents have friends there, different church. But um, can you... I know a lot of my audience, those listeners, were in the South, were in the East, Northeast, and so on. Um, another perspective on the West. What What is it like out there in Oregon, Western Oregon, especially? You're in Western Oregon, uh, so very close to the westernmost part of right, the United States. What's the culture like, the church like? How was COVID? Uh, just kind of flesh that out for it. We'll, uh, we'll wrap up with that, okay? Sure. Wow. <laughs> I know. Well, I like to answer long questions. We have um, my sphere of influence is relatively conservative. And again, you know, child's in a Christian school and our family, by the grace of God, you know, are all believers on different areas of sanctification in that process. So it's very conservative. Uh, I do even people at work and many people in my sphere are also um, a very, uh, patriotic. Um, we also are um, gun owners. And so we believe in that and the freedom to do that. And so, but we do have very serious pockets of liberal thinking and they're amazing people. Many of them are just absolutely amazing people, but their scriptural doctrinal truth is either not there at all or completely inaccurate. It's just not solid truth at all. And so we also have Portland here, which was insane when COVID, when you talk about COVID, yeah. I used to go to my dear friend's place in Washington and you have to go through Portland. Yeah. And I, that was, to be honest with you, one of the reasons I recently purchased a gun, mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure number one, I had it before they changed the laws that said I couldn't. Yeah. And that if ever that atmosphere that was in Portland ever came to Grant's Pass, that we could protect our home and our not not even the home in terms of the home itself or the belongings or here take food you can have the last you know can that i've got yeah but if you're coming after my family then you there's you know there, i'm asking god for wisdom i'm asking yeah. god because again you have to be very serious if you own something you are you able to take someone's life and in what degree are you willing to do that and so that is not something I take lightly. And that would absolutely be case by case, Holy Spirit led. Yeah. But um, I do, you know, I do have a solid belief in that. And so the tragedies that are going around right now with the shooting and the insanity is such a bigger picture than what people want to make of it. And again, everybody's, everybody's taking sides and they forget that it's Christ. It's the home. It's, you know, what are we teaching? And I think it starts in our home and then it goes from Absolutely. our community. Yeah. When Ryan was asking me what, you know, about these wars and again, it's seven, we were talking about, you know, the first thing is, you know, taking your toy from your brother and then it's taking, um, Oh, sorry. Let me get rid of that. When it, um, when he's taking, then it's about what if the people next door want this house, they just decide they want it and then they yeah. come over and they take it. Okay, so now stretch out those borders into the community. You know, what if this town wants this town? And then it's what if this state wants that state? And okay, now what if this country wants that country? That's what we're doing. So I kind of, I, I started small and saying, so we teach ourselves to share and to love and to, you know, be willing to coexist in a matter that honors God here. And then if we do that, we're, we're loving and honoring God when it comes to borders and boundaries and other yeah. areas as well. So we are definitely conservative in my sphere of influence, but we are definitely have liberal pockets. Um, our governor, which is leaving soon, she's maxed out. And I'm going to say very honestly, thank heaven 
um, because <laughs> I do not believe in the decisions that she she made to support us and in, in as a governor. And so that's going to be on the docket here soon. And um, you know, we we definitely have a a, a left flavor to our area here. Definitely. Yeah. How about you? How about what's what's your area like? Um, yeah. So I mean, Kentucky's is more more red than uh, blue. Um, but I mean, bigger cities, of course, you're going to have more kind of lowest common denominator. Everybody mm -hmm. believes in this kind of multiculturalism, which tends leftward. I think that's why we have so many, why cities tend to be way more leftist and progressive because there's so many different cultures and we all think, well, I can't be right. Well, I can't be right. And therefore they kind of lower down, at least in the West might not be the case in, you know, the Middle East or the East, but uh, certainly in America and, and uh, Canada and things like that, New London places. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty, the struggle I have here and it's probably not so much in Oregon is everybody's a Christian. Everybody goes to church or used to go to church or is a member of the church, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have this very difficult, slippery sort of mix of cultural Christianity and well, I'm, a, I'm, I'm American, so of course I'm a Christian kind of mentality, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm, you know, that doesn't exist in California and, and probably not very much in Oregon either. Um, so, but yeah, we've got similar, I mean, especially going to being part of a, a, a church of a fellowship of people who want to know the word, who want to live for Christ. Uh, and that's kind of what you're saying too. You're in a, you're in a good church. And so you only see certain people uh, certain times, which we generally all do. Um, so that's, that's good. So I guess, mm -hmm. I guess Oregon's not as crazy as, as, as many people might think it is, right? That's what you're saying. Well, and I hear people say get in a local church and I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but I struggled. And so we are in um, Evans Valley Church. My, son, my son's associate pastor and Pastor Scott is just right on with the word. Doctrinal yeah. truth is so, you know, and I you know, love the four or five people that sort of sing all the, they do scripture first and have a song applicable to the scriptures. But it's not dynamic like um, Edgewater, which is, you know, where your, family, your parents' friends go to. And we used yeah. to go there on Wednesday nights and you kind of get a little meal and then you go. Even my son would bring his family. We would meet there. Um, but again, there are reasons. It's sad to me that back in the day, it was the Church of Corneth. So it was the same body, just a town. Church of this, Church of that. And it had to do with the town, not the, not the doctrine. Okay. Until later. And then much later, the doctrine split up. You know, as you, know you get that whole process. But yep. now it's not just the church of the town, it's all these denominations. And then, like you said, you've got all of these strong Christians. I think the enemy is using the, the, the Christian off base, which is, and I love, you know, all churches to some degree, but come on, you know, Joel Osteen, Stephen Furtick, you know, yeah. everything's about me. Everything's about the show. You've got a production that's, you know two, three, four, five, ten thousand dollars and uh, the, the seeker friendly. Um, Wilkerson is the one that really changed my life scripturally uh -huh. because back about, I don't know, it must have been five, six, seven, eight years ago. Um, it was a clip that he had. It was like a five minute clip on seeker friendly churches. And I'll be darned if I'm going to allow you it, to teach you to be comfortable in your sin. I'll be darned if I'm going to, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And that, yes, there's an answer. And yes, there's a truth to come out of that insanity. But I'm not going to sit here and let you be comfortable in it. And um, I, it changed my focus on reading the word. It changed my, I started asking questions to the pastors at the time that I was talking to. Nobody, Richard, wanted to talk to me about it. Mm. Nobody wanted to bring it up. It's such a controversy wow. because I'm challenging status quo. I'm challenging what we've always done. You know, yeah. whether it's music or whether it's, you know, w seeking to please the the audience and not please the Lord. It's such a subtle shift, Richard, that you were talking about. So I align when you were saying everybody where you are, they are all Christians. But now we have to define it, define it. I hate the fact that the world has has hijacked our terms. I mean, I can't even uh. do I can't do one video even today on today's video. I had to start with. And please remember that we're not talking about serious abuse. 
because we're talking about forgiveness. We're talking about don't stop calling you just because somebody's hurting your feelings and being rude to you that they're abusive. You right. know, hijacking these terms, yeah. right? And I've got to start the conversation with, I'm not talking about serious abuse. And I hate that I have to even define that because of course we're not talking about that. Right. Of course. But yeah, you have to say it because people jump to conclusions. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're going to look at that one thing when it says, you know, forgive them for, you know, like you've been forgiven. They go, well, how do I forgive him when, you know, he just beat me? Of course, get help, get out, get counsel, seek, do the right thing. We're not talking, right. I'm talking about everyday life, everyday life where we are absolutely spitting out trash and being rude and hateful and ugly and everybody's calling it abusive. You know, it, it's like these terms are just being hijacked. Yeah. And I, I hate that. So is Christian to be a Christian. I can't just say I'm a Christian and everybody used to know what that meant. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I, or now everybody says spiritual, you know, I'm spiritual. It's like, you know, cause of new age and all that stuff. Yeah. Very so, prevalent on the West in the West. Uh, all the, all the new age, all the, all the lefties kind of part and go to the coast. It's very weird, especially the West coast. But and we have a little, another, that's another show. Life. Yeah. It's <laughs> all about crystals and all about, you know, yeah, it's just, yeah. yeah. Actually, my son is so interesting. So he was, he's close to 40, 30 now, he's 30. So that would be 10 years ago. He was going to college at this particular town and his roommate, he said, and he was a believer at the time. And he said, I can't, I, I can't do this, mom. I can't do this. And he, he got out wow. and that's when he went into the military. And Richard, you know, maybe we'll even end on this. I mean, I, I remember he was in his, so he's what, 19, 20. And his dad was more freaked out about him going in the military than I was. That was kind of weird. Um, but he came to me and, and he wanted to go in the Marines because he wants to be all, be all that you can be, right? Yeah. And I, I remember asking him, I said, son, this isn't about wearing a, you know, your uniform. This isn't about um, you know, being the showboating and everything. It's like, what are you going to do when your best friend shot next to you? And he's nice 19 or 20. I'm not going to say he you know, hasn't struggled, but at 19 or 20, listen to this. And he said, mom, if I'm on the front line and I'm ready to die and my buddy next to me sees the peace that I have and asks me why I have it. And I tell him and he comes to know the Lord the day before he dies. Then that's where I'm supposed to be. Wow. And I said, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, when you're just being, you know, talk about a mic drop moment wow. it's kind yeah. of like the maturity and the maturity wasn't michael it's not saying michael was all that it's saying the lord of god is all that god almighty was speaking into this 19 20 year old boy to say even though he was all hyped in the military and kind of loving that whole aspect and you know learned the hard way how the military doesn't have all the principles that they you know were hoping that he was had he was talking about all the times he was able to actually have Bible studies and have the word of God and how the Lord put him in certain places. And then one thing I wanted to end on too with the abortion, and that's the same thing my son came. My son came out saying, Mom, why did I live? Why did I live when everybody else died? Uh, and I remember going through that. God, why did I live when there's so many babies that didn't? So when you think about that and you say, this is where it's not about me, Richard. It's not about you. It's not about my son. It's about God gives life and he has the ability to take it. Yeah. God, everything belongs to God. My children, my home, everything, our ministry, our channel, everything belongs to God. I even struggle sometimes saying my channel, even though we all say my kids, yeah. I try really hard to say, thank you for coming back to keeping a real with grandma Joe. And, and, and I, and I use my channel, but I use it sparingly. I just, I always just really want so much that God gets the glory, that it is all about God in whatever that we're doing. And so it isn't, again, it's not about patting my son on the back or even when he preaches a good sermon, it's not about patting him on the back because he comes to me and he said, did, you know, how did I represent, did I represent Christ well? Yeah. My prayer before I came on with you is do I, do I represent Christ well? And did I represent my host? Well, if I am the host, is it, am I representing my featured guest? Well, and am I representing Christ? Well, and so that's, that's the heart. And so when you come out and you weren't aborted and you are here and there is a destiny that God has given you and I wasted, so, not wasted, but so many years, you know, had I, had I had my head out of my behind when I had my obstinate license plate, you know, what would life have been? But then again, you know, here I am, God uses us where we're at and 
I love God with all my heart. I'm, I'm grateful to be here. I'm a cancer survivor. So once again, wow. beating the odds. So you think, you know, if God wanted to take me home right after he gave me Ryan, he literally put Ryan in our lap and I had cancer. Wow. And my girls are saying, mom, that's not, that's not okay. You want to go home. You're happy to see the Lord. And I said, I am truly, but just much like Paul, it's like to be with the Lord would be great. But God's not, the, I don't believe it. Can he? Yes. But is God going to give me a seven-year-old and take me home the day after? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. So I need to take care of my body. And I just say, God, just give me 15 years. Just, you know, he'll be 18, 19. And then, you know, I'm going to be okay with whatever you do. But if you can give me 15 years, because you put this young man in my my heart and in my husband's heart and in our life. And if I could represent you well, and I could gear him up, armor him up so that when he goes into the world, he's going to be dealing with issues you and I never have. He's going to be dealing with issues that if I say that I'm a Christian, I may not have a job. I may not be able to get food. Who knows? Yeah. They're not like us. Not that he won't be married and have children. That'll be great. But my my goal is to armor her, him up to face a world that may be against him. Yeah. Well, that is, that's an excellent point. I mean, really, I mean, focusing on ultimately Christ, right? The Lord is the one who, who owns it. He is the one to whom we serve. And uh, that's always a good reminder. Always a good reminder because it's so easy to, slip into something else or think about this or kind of compare and kind of, you know, slip into envy or gossip or whatever um, if we're not focused on Christ. So yeah. I appreciate it so much. Just, I hope this is uh, edifying and helpful for, for the listener. Um, and yeah, go ahead and check out grandma Joe's channel. If you haven't already, uh, it is on YouTube. There you just Gma Joe, uh, keeping it real and uh, subscribe to her channel. She's got a lot of great content. Like I said, very short and concise and to the point. So I appreciate the time, thank Joe. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah. God bless you all. All right. Bye. Thank you.